In today's video, we will be taking a look at my updated 2024 presidential election prediction, but this time without the candidates. So basically, any Democrat or any Republican that has any chance of winning their respective nominations. Now, on the Democratic side, it's probably going to be Joe Biden. Now, I know that Democrats potentially have a more conservative Democrat of H-A-L-F-K descendant that is running. Nonetheless, he has no chance of winning the Democratic nomination. Now, for the Republican side, it could be Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. I don't see anyone else winning. However, Trump is more likely going to be the nominee than Ron DeSantis, so I'm going to put this prediction leaning towards a Trump versus Biden matchup, but also considering a Tr Biden versus DeSantis matchup. So this video is basically about if I didn't know the candidates, who would I predict win the 2024 presidential election at this time? Now Republicans are at 113 safe electoral votes versus Democrats at 183. Naturally, I would give the, uh, the first likely electoral votes to the underdogs, which in this case will be the Republican Party. Now, Alaska and South Carolina are the first two states that come to mind as likely Republican states. These are states that could be safe, but I do, don't believe the margins will be more than 15 points. Nonetheless, the, both of these states are definitely going to go for the GOP. Now, going to be going to go to the states of Iowa and Ohio. Now, both of these states voted for Joe Biden by 8.2 in Iowa and 8.1 in Ohio, respectively. These two states are heavily trending red thanks to many of the working class counties such as Lake County, Portage County, and some of the other counties near the Cleveland and Toledo area. And in the state of Iowa, just many of these rural cities and towns near Cedar Rapids have been trending towards the Republican by heavy margins in recent elections, thanks in part due to Donald Trump. And given that he is the most likely GOP candidate, he is most certainly to win both of these states by likely margins. Now as well as that, the state of Texas. Now Trump could make the state actually become more competitive, but I don't think it's going to be within 5%, and I think that Ron DeSantis definitely is a good enough candidate for Texas to be able to win the state by a comfortable margin. Overall, I think Repu Republicans are likely to win the state by around 7 to 8 points, a slight increase from 2020. I also think Florida will go to Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis, whoever the GOP candidate will be. The reason being that Donald Trump won the state of Florida by 3.3 points instead of the 1.2 points he won the state in by two in 2016, and the state has been turning Republican since. Ron DeSantis won his governor re-election by 17 points. And considering that he might be the GOP nominee, and the fact that Trump and DeSantis both are residents of Florida, it just seems like Republicans have a very good chance of winning the state. So yeah, that would be my Florida characterization. Now for Democrats, now they are at just 183 electoral votes versus Republicans who are now in the lead. I will give Democrats their likely states. First off, Colorado and New Mexico. Both of these states will go to Democrats by around 10 to 13 points. Colorado voted for Democrats by 13.5 and New Mexico by 10.8 points for Joe Biden in 2020. I expect those margins to be similar. I think New Mexico might trend Republican a little bit and Colorado will probably hold the or the same margin for the Democratic Party because they did very, very well there in 2020. One of the only states where they exceeded polling expectations. So those will be the characterizations of those states. Now for Virginia, I think th that state will also be in a likely blue column by around 10 points. I don't think this is too surprising considering that Virginia has been trending blue for the last couple of elections. Sure, in 2021, Democrats actually lost the governor election there, but governor elections typically don't mean that much. Further, the state and much of the DC suburbs are expected to trend Democratic even further, suggesting that the state is definitely not going to vote Republican. Now, those will be the states considered likely for the Democratic Party, as well as that main second dish means at large vote should be likely not safe for the Democratic Party. I apologize for that error. Now the final states will be considered lean and tilt for both sides, disregarding main second congressional district, which will be likely red because really that's been the case for the for the last two elections. 
Now I'm going to start off with the state of Nevada and move our way to some of the Western states that could decide the presidential election itself. First off, the state of Nevada. Now, in 2020, Democrats won the state by 2.4 points, though it's notable to see that Clark County, where two-thirds of the population is located in the state of Nevada, trended red by 1.4 points, despite the national environment trending blue by around 2.3 points, suggesting Democrats are not going to have the best year in Nevada, and the state is trending red slightly, but still an impressive shift given the fact that the state only voted for Democrats by just over two points. Nonetheless, I think Democrats are still slightly favored because Republicans aren't necessarily in the best shape as of this moment in time, so I'm going to put Nevada as a tilt red, tilt blue state. Now for the state of North Carolina, this state voted for Trump by around 1.3 points in 2020. I think North Carolina will go for the Republicans once more because there's a lot of rural voters that are going to vote Republican regardless of what happens. And also many rural black voters have been trending towards the Republican Party and those counties will be crucial to deliver small shifts away from the Democratic Party so that Republicans could win the state by a substantial margin of around 3 to 4 points, much better than, much better than their margin in the state in 2020. So North Carolina will be a lean state for the GOP. Now for Arizona. Arizona is a tough one. Trump won't do very well there, but DeSantis could do pretty well in the state of Arizona. If you look at the shift there, Maricopa County shifted 5 points to the Democratic Party, and although you see these significant shifts toward the GOP, Maricopa and Pima counties are pretty much cover around 75-80% to 80 of the state's population, and at the end of the day, both of these counties shifted more than 5 points to the Democratic Party. So I do believe Democrats will end up winning the state of Arizona just be based on these statistics. Trump is not going to do too well in, in the state and in these imp important counties that really decide which way the state is going. And although Ron DeSantis could do better, he is unlikely to be the GOP nominee, and thus I'll give the state to Democrats and Joe Biden in particular. Now for the state of Georgia. This is one of the largest Democratic shifts in the entire nation as Democrats did really, really well in the Atlanta suburbs. Gwinnett County, Cobb County, Rockdale County, and Henry County, many of these larger suburban and urban counties shifted 10 or more points to the Democratic Party. And really, turnout was extremely high in Atlanta, especially black voter turnout. Nonetheless, some of these rural areas still shifted towards the Republican Party, but these shifts weren't very significant to make a substantial difference. Nonetheless, Democrats only won the state by 12,000 votes. But at this point, because Trump is the nominee, I don't think he's going to win the state of Georgia. Trump has proven himself to be incapable to win such a state, and I think that although DeSantis might do better, as his neighboring state is Florida, which is just right below the state of Georgia, at the end of the day, I think Democrats are slightly favored in the state of Georgia. Now for Minnesota. Minnesota is probably going to go blue once more because Democrats did win the state by around 7 points in 2020. This shows that probably Democrats are going to win the state again, and the state has one of the largest Democratic voting streaks in the presidential level, as it was the only state that Walter Mondale was able to carry against Ronald Reagan, as Reagan won all the other 49 states. So the state probably goes to the Democratic Party. Nebraska's second district, although redistricting made the district slightly more Republican-leaning, at the end of the day, Biden was still won the district by around 6 points, as opposed to the 7 points he won the district by. Also, the, counties, the district is still largely based in Douglas County, so not, not much has actually changed. I think Democrats will slightly win the district, but if Ron DeSantis is the nominee, the district could go to the GOP. Now for the state of Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin is going to go for the GOP, regardless if Trump or DeSantis is the GOP nominee. The reason being that Trump has a very strong Rust Belt appeal, while DeSantis, though not having as strong of a Rust Belt appeal, I think the state of Wisconsin is not going to do too well for the Democratic Party. At the end of the day, they're just not going to get some of the working class voters, and I think there will be some type of anti-Biden wave given that he is the incumbent and holding the incumbency office typically means people are going to judge you more heavily than some of the other previous 
president that may be running for their elections. And at the end of the day, I think black turnout will be down, and generally speaking, Democrats will not be as eager to turn out in Milwaukee and Madison, resulting in a narrow victory for the GOP in the state of Wisconsin, which brings them to 245 electoral votes to Democrats at 255. Democrats only need one of the following states, Michigan or Pennsylvania, while Republicans need both of them in order to win the election. Um, the not super important state at this point in time is New Hampshire, and I think that state will go to the Democratic Party, as Republicans were only able to win two small counties in the state out of this, um, several counties in the state. Further, Democrats won Concord, Hillsborough, and Rockingham counties. These are all competitive counties that have shifted towards the Democratic Party as the state of New Hampshire in general has trended to the Democratic Party, thanks in part because the state is pretty educated and educated voters have trended towards the Democrats as a whole. Overall, I think New Hampshire will go to Democrats once more, though by a significantly lesser amount of about 3-4%. Now I think the moment of truth. I think Democrats are favored in Michigan. The reason being that regardless Trump or DeSantis, DeSantis doesn't have that working class appeal and I don't think he can do very well in counties like Macomb County or some of the rural areas. Trump, however, couldn't do that well in some of the suburban counties that have trended towards the Democratic Party. One of the good examples will be Oakland or Kent County. These are counties that are going to trend towards the Democratic Party if Trump was to be the nominee. And I think, again, if DeSantis is the nominee, he might not do well in counties like Macomb and some of the rural areas, thus resulting in Democratic victories regardless who is a GOP nominee. Finally, in the state of Pennsylvania, I do think Democrats are slightly favored. The reason being that although Biden barely won the state, um, the state, I, I just don't think Ron DeSantis could win it because he just isn't that working class a peeler, someone who could win working class voters. And Trump, I just feel like people are not going to like him. The thing is, although he only lost by 1.2%, it's going to be really hard to make up for those voters because at the end of the day, I don't see many people who really did not vote for him the first in 2020 that would be eager to vote for him in 2024. Overall, though I do believe the state will be within one percentage point, I think Republicans are still going to be screwed in Pennsylvania, ultimately resulting in another election win for the Democratic Party. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.